It's Bubba the Love Sponge, and I'm so excited about ditching the shorts and the flip-flops and start upgrading to some cozy cashmere sweaters, maybe a leather jacket, something a little bit warmer. And the best place to find this is at Quince. Quince offers affordable, high-quality essentials for any wardrobe. That includes seasonal must-haves like Mongolian cashmere sweaters from only 60 bucks and comfortable pants for any occasion. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. And they partner with them directly, cutting off the cost of the middleman and passing that savings directly to you, my friend. That means Quince items are priced 50 to 80. Let let me, let me repeat that. 50 to 80 percent less than similar brands so you can update your look without breaking the bank hell i was on quince.com just a few days ago of course don't forget promo code forward slash bubba and i picked up the uh, mesh performance training quarter zip hoodie and the uh, organic heavyweight fleece crew saved about i don't know 40 or 50 bucks both five star rated quince has something for everybody 100 percent quality guaranteed never had an issue if you're talking about quality and price and fashion, you gotta go to quince.com. Make sure you use my forward slash bubble gimmick. Upgrade your wardrobe with pieces made to last from Quince. Go to quince.com forward slash bubba. That's gonna get you free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com forward slash bubba. That's gonna get you free shipping and 365 day returns. Again, that's Q-U-I-N-C-E quince.com com forward slash Bubba. What happened today? We had a whole other plan. Yeah. And then you texted me this morning. It's like, new you're going to want to watch this. Yeah. And yeah. I did. I yeah. jumped in it. We know it's new for you, JR. The beautiful thing. It. It's still a lot of this is going to be new for me, too. <laughs> oh, I can't but, wait to form my own opinion like everyone else listening. Yes, ready, y'all. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to shut up and listen. Blossy, you have the floor, sir. Oh, man. Yeah. So uh, it's funny that this morning I was I was getting ready and, you know, I, I actually had a really busy day. I had to get out and go over to Pensacola to do some work and stuff. So I'm in there, I'm, you know, showering, getting ready. And it literally like 805, 806. And I'm, I, I needed to be out the door about 745 was my goal. And I was already a few, few minutes late. But then suddenly, Bubba goes into guys. When we come back from this segment, I've got something that you've heard before. You've heard the audio, but I finally found the video of this, and I really want to just dive into this a little bit more and talk about how important it is. And it's the sit down interview that Hogan did in April of 2013 with Mike Cauta, when him and Bubba had been six months since the sex tape sex tape had dropped, and him and Bubba were on the outs. And Hogan felt like he needed to get back on the air. So Bubba's still working for the bone. He hadn't, he hadn't been fired yet. This is April, April, 2013. And, uh, Calta had the afternoon show going still. Right. And so he comes in on that show. So in order to set this deal up, let, let's just, but before we get into that interview and the interview is what you saw, you watched some of that today, Brantley, where they right. talked, he was just breaking down the interview and what, Hogan was doing and what Calta did and Calta's yeah. response. I mean, the interview itself, you could just stay in that, you know, 41 second conversation or whatever it was, you know, like just listen to a small piece of that tells you so much, but I want to, I want to go to something else here. Let's, let's back up to how we got here. Right. So just kind of resetting some timelines and, and made me think about something I'd never thought about before today and kind of started diving into it. All right. So if we go back to September the 27th, 2012, that is when Mike Calta sent Tony Burton an email asking him anything yet. And he sent a response back. And then finally, that same day, like an hour later, he said, where is the, you know, the Gawker deal? And he sent him Gawker's address. So they sent a correspondent email really quickly. He gets the address for Gawker so he can mail something to him. And obviously, right, that's why you get a mailing okay. address. And then October 4th, seven days later, seven days later is when AJ uh, Delirio, uh, the publisher at Gawker, released that two-minute excerpt of the sex tape of Hogan. Now, keep in mind, there's a 30-minute tape here in total, right? But this was just two minutes of sex tape. There's Hogan. It's out there, right? So then 
Let's fast minutes, forward. I hear you, boy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're 30 I mean, minutes. time, time, out, time out. It's so, yep. it's, and I've never known this. Yeah, yeah, I didn't either. It's thirty minutes. There's thirty, 30 minutes, minutes of total of total film there. Yep, total, total, total bang, and it's what it is. Yeah, well, it's okay. more than that. It's All a right. lot of conversation. Oh, it keeps okay. rolling. That's where that's what really got Hogan in big trouble is the conversation, not as much the sex tape. The sex oh. tape is what's famous, but the things he said that uh you know he used some racial slurs there yeah later i was gonna on. say that gotcha. and none so of this that, came that's out where to begin the n word came into absolutely play. yeah okay. and none and none of this came out then like what came out then was just a two minute sex tape boom that's it so now let's fast forward literally a week later um it was uh you know so after that sex tape had been um had, had gone out hogan's attorney uh david houston he received two correspondents within like a day or two apart. This is around October the 10th. So now we're six days away. And one was from uh, an attorney representing, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pete, uh, Peter Thiel, the guy. Peter Thiel, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. See your PayPal, yep. So it's yeah, his attorney. Kind of yeah, a big exactly. deal. He's the guy that backed Hogan because he got so mad at Gawker. He hated Gawker so much. He funded Hogan's, uh, the, the whole lawsuit. He was like, I'll pay for every bit of this. I want to see him go down. So he yeah. paid for all that. So that was what this phone call was about. It's when Charles, I think his name's Charles Harder that called him who and said, Hey, I want to assist you with this trial. So he gets that call, but then he also gets this cryptic email from good old buddy, Keith Davidson. It says, <laughs> you know, subject Hulk Hogan tape. And it says, please call me regarding above. And that's all he said. Right. So then he came in, they called him. And, and sure enough, Keith Davidson claimed that, you know, he represented the parties that had the actual tape and that what had been leaked to Gawker, is just like a small little sample and the real bad stuff would become later. And, you know, basically Who is said, the Davidson hey, guy? Let me interrupt Keith Davidson is the attorney, right. That actually helped broker the deal was trying to broker. He was trying to extort Hogan. So but he, he's a, he's an attorney though. Yeah, he's an attorney, but he's the same guy that represented Stormy Daniels. All he does yes. is go around and take take people down. Somebody right. who's got a family or whatever, and he's a politician or high high ranking <laughs> official in the city that's gay, he'll go figure out he's gay and then take him down and go, "Hey, you gonna Here pay him two million dollars, or yeah. I'm gonna tell your wife about this?" Right? So that's he, gotcha. he's a real upstanding kind of guy. So <laughs> piece like of shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, absolutely was so. So anyway, so he so he shares this information. Say, "Hey, I'm representing people," and he's representing to come to find out is Matthew Lloyd spice boy, you know, mm. and who works with Mike Calta, Right. So there, that's his boy. So that's the one arm reach. He's already sent the email. Calta had Calta is the one that asked for the address. Somebody shipped it. Now he's got, he's out there peddling this whole deal off. So, so I want to look at something here. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, so he starts the negotiations at $1 million and they're like, Okay, whatever. And then we move into December, right? So this is in October the 10th. December, they set up a sting operation with the FBI. Hogan, he reports it. I'm being, you know, somebody's trying to extort me. They go to the Pearl Hotel, and this is in December of 2012. And during that operation, Keith Davidson was there, along with Lori Burbage, who was representing Matthew Lloyd. This is all public this is all public record. This isn't just like hearsay or anything. Right, this is all right, FBI. Right. Yeah. There's even words. And they, we've covered some of this in the past too. Yes. yes. yes I love and they this. had already negotiated a, an agreement, even had a written agreement out between two fake names just to keep everything hidden for $300,000. That was the number that they ended up landing on. That's how they got them to meet there to try to finish this deal. But the FBI was there. So while they're there, um, they ended up detaining them all. So oh, they all get 300 grand. It is a lot of work for 300 grand. Um, but, th but they detain them all. And, and the, t and he admits that the Gawker sex tape, um, from his client is just a pressure tactic, you know? So he says that there's an audio from the FBI has it, him saying it from, if you read the transcripts, that that was sent to Gawker as a teaser so they could really go after Hogan to really make some money. The whole thing was a work, right? You know what I mean? The right. whole thing was uh, a work yeah. to try to get to Hogan. So it comes right all the way back to, you know, them trying to get the money. Well, um, at the time, so this is in December at the time, nobody knows after they detain them, they arrest them. Then they don't charge them. That's what's, that's the bizarre part, right? So you, you've yep. got, you've already proven extortion. Why they didn't charge them. I have no idea. 
which that came up later in the Trump trial. Who does Keith David, Davidson actually work for now? Is he That's a, right? Is he yes, paid yes, for? Yes, yeah. Right? Is he paid for? Yep. Because they let him go. They had him dead to rights. So here's to me. I'm going to go ahead and break down a timeline. So we hadn't even got to where Hogan in April sits down with Mike Calta. But see, I always thought that they tried to shop the tape. They couldn't shop the tape. Then they gave it to Calta, who then sent it to Gawker, and then Gawker published it just because they couldn't do anything with it. It had no value. Even Bubba kind of says that. But they sent it to Gawker before they even tried to shop it. So it's like a kind of a reverse deal. I, and see, I missed that somewhere along the way. I thought it was a different order. And it kind of okay. sounds like, even when I hear Bubba say it, that's what it sounds like. It's like they tried to they tried to shop it. They didn't do it. They didn't press charges. And then later on, it was after that fact is when actually Gawker got it. But the question is, how much did Gawker have to begin with? Did they have the entire tape? Because two and a half years later is when the a racist stuff drops. They, they held on to that forever. Somebody did. Yeah. It, so, I think the Enquirer actually dropped it, but yeah, but right. the timeline on that was a little different than what I thought it was, and I find it very interesting. And it it, it not only ties um, to me, it, it only ties uh, Mike Calta to sending it to Gawker, which is very obvious, but it also ties him to the first part of that, which was trying to broker that deal for the money, which he wasn't tied to directly. It was his little pawn, you know, Ma Matthew Lloyd, Spice Boy, <laughs> Which we all kind of thought that, but it, he had. But now he was involved even before that brokerage deal took place. He was involved early. It's back to September twenty seventh, and this thing happened in December. So he was involved way early in the process. So I just found that very interesting. Just when when you get there, yeah. So for sure. now we fast forward to the the real deal, which was that interview where or the first time when uh, Hogan went into Calta in April um, of two thousand thirteen. He goes on Calta show. And so that's the one, that's what Bubba broke down this morning was that tape, because now it's actually a videotape and it's that, and he's talking about it. Um, and it's interesting, you know, he starts off, J JR, have you seen this at all, JR? Not yet. No. I've that's got like, it. You want to mm. check it out? I got Absolutely. It wanna... Let's play that, that, let's let's, play that, that, that little excerpt. Yes. Let's play, I don't know if it's the full excerpt. It, I mean, Just it the is one, definitely the, the full excerpt, but it's going to probably be, this is going to be Bubba's response as well, Bubba kind of sets this up a little bit. He does set I it do up. Believe. Yeah, let's, so let's, let's do this. Uh, let's just let it play. But when you're facing the guy that you practically ruined his life and you were posturing with your corporation to take my job based on my involvement in this tape, when at that time Cox Corporate had no idea that you actually had done it, I got to think that that's a lot of guilt and ready to short circuit in your little head at any time that it's almost information overload. Here's what I found. Everything I've heard, you know, you haven't, you've had a plan. Hold on, let me just reset. So let me just take these three parts. Hogan puts over Calta and actually has a dig on me. He goes, everything I've heard, you know, you've had a plan and you didn't have to do, uh, but something hits the fan and you've stayed true to your game and you're a man's man. And, and so he, he's picking a shot at me because, you know, we obviously love me had like, you know, poop hits the fan and yes. various stunts and gimmicks. That's what we were noted for. He takes a shot at me. Calta melts down. And then, and then Hogan goes on to say, it's nice to have a platform in Tampa radio to be able to talk on because all of these years I've had that, like almost he expects it. Like almost Hogan expects to have this platform and he freaks out that he no longer has that platform, that he's willing to go do an interview with the guy that actually is behind it all to be able to secure his ability to call in on an FM radio station. I mean, at nauseum, he used to call in sometimes two or three times a day. <laughs> And Hogan is so full of himself and so narcissistic that he puts Cowhead over. He always hated Cowhead. Puts him over, has a dig on me, and then 
thanks him for potentially giving him an opportunity to have to, to have a radio platform in his hometown that he's had now for 20 plus years. I'm going to run it without any interruptions. Everything I've heard, you know, you haven't you've had a plan all along and you haven't had to throw crap against the fan to, you know, do gimmicks and stuff. You've been really consistent, you know, from the line you're doing the sand to be cow head right. your show a certain way. So you've been on point. So I said, man, it'd be great to find out, you know, if this guy is great, this a man, everything JR. I've heard and sit down and talk with him. And it'd really be great to have, you know, the, the, the radio voice in town, you yeah. know, like, you know, would be really consistent to be friends with the guys. You've never actually crossed the line and did something that was, you know, no, and that's the thing. I, you know, I, I, I what do you consider? I mean, I haven't, I might have crossed the line. No, I don't. Look I, at this guy. <laughs> you and I can have as much as you want. Jeez. I don't. No, I can put a face with a right, name. I'm good. We're not fighting. We're good. <laughs> no, no, we're good. <laughs> I, was, I was excited about coming in today because <laughs> I appear to be a breath of fresh air to be on the same page and uh, have that's a, it. a good, you know, open, open relationship with the radio station and everything. And, you know, all of a sudden I've got, you know, all this crazy stuff going on in town on a personal level with business. Right. Says, and all of a sudden, I don't have this voice on the air, which was weird. Yeah. After so many years. So I'm trying, really <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep Sam. He made it. He made it. Made it. That's great. <laughs> That's so good. He's trying to, he's just making sure he gets free advertisement for Hogan's Beach. I used to drive by it all the time over there <laughs> yeah. in Clearwater. He oh, just yeah. needed somewhere to exactly get free advertised at. to pump his, pump his show, pump his things up when he had, you know, ladies' night or whatever. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Lord have mercy! Man. That was an awkward conversation. First off, Hogan Twitchy. Yeah, that is not, you did, yeah, that was is not him, world champion. Hey, Hulk Hogan. How, how about the the fact? So here's where you got to realize Hogan's mindset was at the time. He knew that two things. He knew that the sex tape had dropped because he saw it happen in October. Then in December, he was there with the FBI sting operation. But what he didn't know is any of the players in the game. They the FBI refused to tell him anybody. They they called him Mister X was Matthew Lloyd. So he had no idea that Cal they- was even was even in arm's reach distance. Now here he is in April hanging out with this dude on his show, trying to get some rub, not realizing that's the dude that actually sent the stuff to Gawker to begin with. And he's on this show right there, not even knowing this and giving dicks to Bubba. So, you know, Hogan's kind of innocent in that moment where he didn't have a dang clue. He just knows he's out there. And all he knows is Bubba because nobody's saying a word. They're well, keeping it all hush, hush. Yeah, hmm. and then you think there you think someone would have been arrested if they had all that intel at some point. You would have thought. And so so also um who took the tape to start with? Who set it up to get it to steal it? Did did the cowhead guy send somebody to steal it initially and they were going to try to profit off of it? That or? is a great question because Matthew Lloyd, Spice Boy used to work for Bubba. He left Bubba and they had a big little ceremony. He's going to go do his own thing over at the bone. I mean, over with, you know, couch of the deal over there. Right. So he's leaving Bubba's show to go to his show and he wished him well. And then, cause he was going to get his own little deal on the side and he wished him well. It was great. He took the tape when he left. He took, he took the DVD when he left. Where was the tape? How did, yes. In Bubba's how studio. Did, yes. What the fuck and is how did, the studio? Well, that's another, that's. It, and it, how did he know it was that in the tape existed? It was in Bubba's desk. It was in Bubba's desk. Bubba, I know you're going to listen to this and I'm not. Yeah, Again, it had Hogan I, written on it. It had Hogan written on the DVD. Just, these that, are yeah. not smart moves. If you're, not trying smart. To, if you're trying to hide it. It's not smart. It was a it's different not world back then, too. People, I mean, you it, know, was that, also, it was a different world, That to be fair. But that was his personal whatever, right? That's his personal yeah. DVD. Like, and what his do you desk, think? It, I mean, he, he was how mad he gets when somebody messes with the thermostat. I'm sure. I'm sure no one. I'm sure no one touched his shit in front of him. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not since then. Spice huh? boy, Spice man might have snuck around when nobody wasn't looking. But it's. I mean, I could see a tape saying Hogan on it, and as much as Hogan was on the show back then, whatever. It could have been anything. Like but did it say Hogan sex tape? <laughs> yeah. On it because Hogan. that. I mean, I wouldn't put it past anybody on this just because everybody seems to be a little no, too damn I think, honest. I think it just times. said. I think it just said Hogan on it. I think it just said Hogan on the tape. So that's all. It's on the DVD. It just said Hogan on the DVD. But listen, let's talk about how guilty does Mike Counter feel where he gets so discombobulated, <laughs> so completely just goes into a dang meltdown when he <laughs> so, hears him say, when he looks at him and says, "You know what? I know you would have never crossed the line." With me, because they at that point they didn't like each other because he was a Bubba guy and all this, and they'd had a little bit of beef already. 
Hogan never liked him to begin with. But now he's in there because they didn't have a voice. He's not on Bubba's show anymore because he didn't yeah, like Bubba, free right? Free advertisement. So, so I got to I got to get my voice back out here. I got I'm dang Hulk Hogan, you know. So he's there and he says that. As soon as he says it, man, Calta just goes into a. I wrote it down. I actually tried to write there. Are you ready? Here's the transcript that I created. I'm sure I could have used AI to make it easier, but I didn't. I used just a pencil and pe- pad here. All right. So he asked him. He was like, you know, you and I may have a lot of whatever and something going on. He said, I know you would never cross the line. Bubbles. And then Calta goes, no. And that's the thing. I, you know, I, eh, I, eh, what do you consider? I mean, I haven't, I might have crossed the line. Uh, no, I didn't. I, e, I, e, I could consider crossing the line. You and I could have as much beef as we want. I don't, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> eh, ner, eh, all right, I'm good. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, that's we're not fighting. Like. I can assure you, it's exactly the transcript. <laughs> if you go back and listen to AI it, AI could not transcribe that <laughs> bumbling asshole <laughs> morons. In it, I feel so, no, yeah, like, yeah. Dude, no, I actually just six months ago, I'm the one that buried you. You don't even know it's what he's thinking. Is he's sitting there, he's like, so I didn't think we were going to go getting, this deep. So now he's getting overload and he can't even. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. See that happen. He probably thinks that Hogan knows. Yeah, because he said you would never cross the line. And about to whip his ass. Oh, I, I, I mean, oh, you, oh, oh so you don't want to whip my ass? Yeah, no, are I you don't. Ask, okay, good. Are you asking me? Yeah, or is that or is that a setup? Wow. wow. I mean, at the end of the day, would you want any part of Hogan? Like if you're oh Mike Calta, like a physical altercation. If you if you're anybody, he'll whip your ass, dude. Yes, dude. That's, and he's got uh, some pretty big friends too. Um, yeah, so, yeah, he does. So they got the tape. They leaked a little bit, and then they were going to try to squeeze money from Hogan. The plan was never to 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 bury Bubba. They just uh, it, he was it, Bubba was just a bystander that got hit by the train coming off the tracks. Well, well he allowed the train to come into the station. Right. Well, uh, from the front end, <laughs> and he owned the tape. But as far as the right. transaction and the trying to get money and and even the people I'm I'm more talking about the people trying to sell the tape. The whoever had possession and was trying to extort Hogan to get money to not leak the rest of it, which I think they probably did exactly what they said. They leaked the first little nibble yep. to to bait up. So once the yep. baited up um, they thought he would go for that, uh, and then tried to do it. it. Wouldn't last. Let it die down. Then flipped and sold the other, found another buyer when they put it back on the market. And in, in, in Inquirer, I think you said it was another. Yeah, the Inquirer ended up releasing it. I don't know that anybody ever made a penny on this thing, right? So nobody like. Right. But well, they, somebody they had the, the Inquirer. Oh, paid, somebody had to pay made somebody something. to get it. Oh yeah, I don't. Well, you know, somebody it's funny. Like, made something. Yeah, probably very nominal for what they were trying to shop it for to begin with. But at some yep. point, it got leaked, and it came back. They they because they thought Gawker did it because because that tape came back out and and that was released in July 2015. It was a way down the road. So we're, we're in 2012 when this thing drops in October, and here we are, July 2015. You know what I mean? So we're 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 3 years later before that right, before yeah. that that component drops in there and it's in the middle of this lawsuit that Hogan's got going with Gawker already and then Gawker's like whoa 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 we didn't do that we that's stupid mm-hmm. you know what i mean but like it's probably not the, the inquirer's the one that took responsibility but they didn't give it to them is what they were saying they didn't here here you go release that which <laughs> goes right back to source. goes back to Calta goes back to Sp- Spice Boy Lloyd you know, like it goes back to them being the ones that started this whole process and yes to answer your question JR there was more to gain than just the money. And the money may have is a side deal, but for for Cowhead, it was to take down Bubba and so he could get his job in the mornings. Oh. That's what the big money job oh. is. He's got the afternoon job in the same station. So he's gotcha. for him it's a win win. So that's why he doesn't he probably doesn't really care. It's like, you know, get some money out of the deal and we're gonna take Bubba down. That's probably why he involved himself. If, gotcha. That's my I opinion. I know that le- I forgot that wrinkle. Yeah, you go from making, you know, you know, a hundred grand a year, probably, or two, you know, to, you know, five or 600,000 a year. You know what I mean? That's a big, that's a big jump or something. You know, it's worth him, throwing somebody under a bus that you don't if, like. If, if, you, if you roll wow. that way, yeah. I don't roll that way. I couldn't no. do that. Yeah. You know, it's just like, that's a bad karma comes back and bites you in the ass. Oh, that's every time it does. It's going to start to happen now. It, you know, it that should. Some I, of this, I thought it was going to happen with the Erica deal. I really thought that was like, I watched that again today. I was just watching that video of him pushing her and then it's like how how that happened it's like dude i don't know how they think that's acceptable you know what i mean like uh 
Travis Kelsey gave a not Travis, but Jason Kelsey. Is it Jason, Jason Kelsey? Yeah, yeah. G- gave a, a way more serious apology to a person that deserved it way less than what Mike Calta gave to Erica. I was listening to that apology last night. It was like he's just apologized for his behavior and he's respond better. Even that guy came up at him, you know, calling him, you know. Yeah, you can't names do that. And stuff. He grabbed you his phone and slammed that. his phone. Well, she didn't even do that. She was just interviewing no. him. He asked her to interview him, and she's talking to him. And then his apology was so half-assed that next Monday morning. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Some events happened over the weekend, and I would say it is better. I'm a better person than I should be. So I just want to let you know I'll be better in the future. And I'll be going. Anyway, happy Monday morning. That was his apology. It was very, like he was reading a script. You know, it's like very over-the-top reading a script. And it's like, dude, he's not sorry for that. He's not sorry for his behavior. No, not at all. He's he's just, he's not a good person. You know what I mean? He's just not. Like, he not on any level. He blocked us, by the way. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, he blocked me, too. I'm the only person yeah. that's blocked. The only person that's blocked me is him. So, uh, yeah, that's it. he's the only person that I'm aware of that has blocked us as well. But finishing that <laughs> time, him. yeah, I ain't worried about that dude, man. Whatever, not at all. But you, to finishing that timeline off, though, it's a, it wasn't until September, uh, the second, uh, at 2000, uh, I think it was 2014, the bubble was finally let go at Cox, you know. So it took a while, dude, before Bubba got fired. They just didn't renew his contract after that, you know, and let him go or whatever. It was all due to this. It was just this slow work and this methodical breakdown and beatdown that they did. And then in July, like I said, that's when, you know, that, that sex tape was, you know, a portion of it that was disseminated that was shed a really negative light there on, on Hogan. So, anyway, I, again, the, the interesting thing that I found was that this sex tape was, uh, I, I thought it was shopped to begin with, and then it, it couldn't sell it. So then after it wasn't shopped, then right after that is when it was sent to Gawker. But it was sent to Gawker in the beginning, and that's the part that I missed somewhere along the way. Yeah, no, so that just shows totally Calvin's involvement that. in both both aspects of it 100%. Like, it's just no, well, that drives no the price up. That drives the price up, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Because that proves to everybody it's there. Whoa, crap. Everybody's attention. Now let's let it build. Then yeah. We'll, yeah. Yep. It's so yeah. crazy that it just – this is kind of flown like under the radar. There's still so much dust about it. It's just like a big old ruffle of – yeah, it looks like it peanuts with the dusty dude. What's his name? Uh Crap! What's his name? That would oh peanuts, pigpen, uh, pigpen. Yes, pigpen. yeah. When pigpen comes in, blah, 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 that's like that's what this whole situation <laughs> reminds me. Squiggly lines, of. little <laughs> yes, uh, squiggly dirty, lines. Squiggly like lines. if they all walk into the room at the same time, there's Calta. He's pigpen over there, just ready to stir shit up, and just as a dirty, filthy pig of an animal. And at the end of the day, is what you're saying, Blasey. He just wanted a promotion. Man, and, he did. And it, by any means necessary. Dude, by y'all, any means what necessary. What about what about when the uh, presidential elections and all the elections are over and the there's a lot more commercial uh, space on television again? They start <laughs> running in the Tampa area. A lot of um, somebody, some Bubba Army with some pockets, go make some commercials explaining how he's a piece of crap and what he did, and and show pictures Started. of him yeah. in the worst light and run some commercials and then like get a couple billboards downtown and stuff oh and yeah put on a put on a show to uh expose him basically that's what's got to happen if somebody's being dirt bad they'll get exposed it'll be now or it'll be like five ten years from now it'll be like a digging back into it and somebody and turns out oh yeah and then he'll admit to it right before he croaks look i know there has to be a lot of lamar signs lamar fine yeah. sign company headquartered here in baton rouge louisiana I know they have to be everywhere out there. Hell, a billboard saying just starting to dick on Calta would yeah. be amazing. It goes amazing, a long right? way in traffic. It would, be, it would be, wouldn't it? Like, yeah, just yeah, kind of fire the campaign would. up. Well, like, oh, if then a few whoa. people start thinking about it and they start Google what happened, they're like, oh, his employee took the tape and that's where it came from. And then they're, it helps. It actually helps everybody as far as you know it ratings does. and, and well, views you know and what's listens. about to, you know but, what's about to help that situation a little bit. I'm hoping, and I know Bubba's hoping, I know Bubba's hoping, is a documentary that's in the very, very, very near future. They're finalizing, like, they're in the final, final the process Hogan? of this. Yeah, the whole Bubba, and back to the oh, Hogan deal, the whole deal is a big Hogan, I mean, it's a big uh, Bubba documentary about this whole oh. situation. Yeah, man, that's, so hopefully, and I'm sure they will do it, right? It's a, it's a heck of a story to tell, man, because it's just so it many, is. like, what? 
And so, like, it how feels do you like a movie. I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to be jumping through a bunch of hoops and crawling through a bed of hot coals just to get a good deal. Save a few bucks on some cellular. Nope. It's got to be way easier than that. No hoops, no BS. So that's why Mint Mobile is the place to be. I'm telling you right now, nobody has made it easier than Mint Mobile to get a wireless plan for 15 bucks a month. With the purchase of a three-month plan, I'm going to tell you right now, I called them out on it. Turns out it is really that easy to get a wireless wireless plan for 15 a month. The longest part of the process was the time that I spent on hold to break up with my old provider. It's easy to switch to Mint Mobile, easy to use their website, easy purchase and activation. Everything is easy. And to get started, go to mintmobile.com forward slash Bubba. There you'll see it right now. Boom. All three month plans are only 15 bucks a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high speed data and unlimited talk to text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can even use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your old number with you, which includes all your contacts and all that stuff you got stored in there. To get this new customer offer and a new three month premium wireless plan for only 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com forward slash Bubba. That's mintmobile.com forward Forward slash Bubba. Cut your wireless bill down to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com forward slash Bubba. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to 15 a month. New customers on first three month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabyte on unlimited plan. Additional tax fees and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Explaining football to the friend who's just there for the nachos? Hard. Tailgating from home like a pro with snacks and drinks everyone will love? An easy win. And with Instacart helping deliver the snack time MVPs to your door, you're ready for the game in as fast as 30 minutes. So you never miss a play or lose your seat on the couch or have to go head to head for the last chicken wing. Shop game day faves on Instacart and enjoy $0 delivery fees on your first three grocery orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Other fees and terms apply and put it into like small pieces that you can digest and understand that's the hard part even me or not just me i'm just saying like it took me this long to even realize that the uh you know a sequence of order that i'd missed out on like i just you know what i mean just because it's dude it's, it's very complex i yeah. i mean i don't know of anyone that has ever broken this down this is how the whole thing started with how we got introduced to Bubba and how Bubba yeah. found us and why we're even y'all are even hearing us right now That's true. is because of Blasey a year over a year ago and his knowledge of this story. And I mean, he's had over a year to do more research. It's always mind blowing. More of my just today, intrigue than my knowledge. My knowledge was okay. My intrigue was just through the roof. You know, like that's oh for sure. Part. Yeah, so for for sure. But today was a pivotal pivotal moment election day as this is being recorded oh, yeah. a lot going on and then bubba throws this out we had a whole other plan of what we were going to talk about yeah. had to do a just total yeah. 180 and 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 here we are it's unbelievable that it just i think we're getting closer and closer and when that documentary comes out what about the movie with ben affleck i mean you know that too, there's so many more layers to this onion to peel back. And as our good friend Bobby John says, always have an onion. <laughs> <laughs> Just to bring it back. You can't trust uh, nobody that got no onion. You can't trust nobody if you ain't got an onion. There's a lot, a lot of layers to this onion. That there but really now, is. You do such a great job of doing that, Blaze. I'm sorry. I'm just. <laughs> Got to give you props. You came prepared tonight. No, I appreciate it. it. It was I worked well, on the I'm, little I'm, plan. I'm to... still just trying to work it out in my head because, man, that is an intriguing story, and it's really sad on a lot of levels, and it all comes back to greed like most things do. And, greed. Um, you know, it's just sad for everybody because, you know, the only people that are going to win when no matter what happens now is the lawyers. You know, that's the only people that are going to oh, make yeah. any money out of the deal. Oh, they're Everybody's having... going to lose money. Yeah. Everybody's already lost sleep and time and friends and loved ones probably over it. And, you know, yep. it's just a sad scenario, really. But uh, I hope the truth comes out and they can get to the bottom of it because the brass tacks about it is someone took someone else's personal belongings and went out to gain profit over those. And as far as I know, that's stealing. You know, it is stealing, 100%. And, and they destroyed lives in order to it's try what to. I'm saying, you know, to to do this, and that's just like, man, that's just a damn shame. You know, it is yeah. pitiful. It is. Well, I'm well, glad Blasey, the story's getting talked thoughts? about, and 
I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, documentary like you were talking about. Cause oh, me be, too, man. Can't nice wait. digestible I way for wait. everybody to get all the info. Yeah. But, uh, thanks for bringing us up to speed because I, I, I'm, I'm glad I know that now. I'm going to check in this week. Yeah, sure yeah. It'll be interesting. It will be. I'm sure it will be. Blacey, I wanted to know, did you ha do you have any more thoughts on no, that? That's, do you that's wanna, it. I think wanna... that's it. That's it. You know, like right. that kind of lays it all out there. I'm making it sure does. I don't miss anything. No, that's it. Uh, uh, yep, that's it. We got it. <laughs> let's hit on, let's hit on something else that happened this week. Uh, y'all get it a full checking in with the BRN. That's what this episode's going to oh, be. Yeah. Yeah. You're for right. sure. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this. I know that you didn't JR, but Blasey may have seen a little bit of it, but Gene mother effing Lasker, oh. dude. He that is a, so awesome. I didn't know who he was <laughs> six months ago. Whenever he first started reappearing, whenever it was, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been recent. And good God, that guy has, it's like just a never ending story from a childhood that was troubled to say the least to, uh, where we're, <laughs> where we're at today. But is is it becoming a thing now, Blasey? He's going to be on like basically every Friday. Yeah, he rotates in. I think once a month at least. I know he's in there okay. and that chair. He, yeah, he, he comes in. So God, I can't he's get just enough got, of it. I mean, just crazy. Just a crazy. He's like he's, he's no different. Some of these characters that I grew up with. I'm gonna say no different. There's some unbelievable characters that I grew up with <laughs> back where I, you know, yeah. from. It's hard to like how do you package it and set it into a studio? You know, what I mean, he's got the ability to yes. do that because he's got all that crazy stories. But can actually sit there and talk about it too. And like, yeah, he's, he's he is something else, dude. You know, like he's, yeah, it's, say it's the great, least. dude. It's so good. And uh, yeah, did you uh, there was that one part. What what was that they were talking about uh this week? Uh, last time he was on, oh, with that cooler thing. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, Gene apparently um, invented a solar cooler because he he's a race car driver. Um, okay, yeah, he like he he's dirt track yeah, race cars. car driver yeah. <laughs> and all sprint of that. Sprint car legend well, down there in Florida. Yeah, he is. He's a sprint car legend. Well, this is oh, shoot. I don't remember how. I think it was like two thousand four or something. It's probably like twenty years ago that this happened, and somehow or another he got. On the news. Well, there's no somehow or another. It was this Walmart deal. Walmart had this nationwide thing that anybody who, uh, that you could apply, they were going to get you on the shelf, something like that, you know, whatever it was called. It was like but make it was a wish for an inventor for Walmart. That's basically yes, what it was. Yeah, it was Shark Tank before Shark Tank yes. existed, is what it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. And, and Love Shark so, Tank. whatever, whatever the product was that one was going to go out on the shelf and, you know, go in all the Walmarts and uh, and and make a killing. <laughs> this is what was going to happen. So they had this contest. He explains kind of the numbers and how many people. But Gene had made it to the end. Like they were in the final ten with this solar cooler. And uh, I I've got a clip. I've got the clip. What, I'm not sure a, where this is. This starts. the clip when he's on we're the television going... station or in the studio. Clip? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's the full on clip, but it's definitely them talking about it, and I think it's worth. Okay, I think it's worth. So it's bumping them in. breaking it down too, right? Yeah, let's <laughs> yeah. Just, let's just watch this, and then we'll we'll, we'll fill in the blanks. And, and there's yeah. some. I mean, they went for twenty twenty yeah, minutes, so yeah. I don't know if I have. This is great. I, I think this is going to be a. I oh, think this go. is a good starting yeah. point. Yeah, this kind of explains. Gene kind of explains it here, and uh, I've got time <laughs> stamps for this. So yeah. All right. Contest. Walmart had and the an top, the top invention product would go would would Walmart would take it from you and let you put, I mean, uh, Walmart you, would distribute it. Yeah, right. Well, so Gene, and that's what we were trying to do. So this local dude who doesn't have the charisma that Gene does, got Gene to be the face of this invention, and I knew it. So I called Lasker out on it, and that's why he was mad at me. I'm like, oh, Gene. This isn't your invention. This is Brian or Fred's or whatever the guy's name is. It's Mark. But it was because, see, Mark was dealing with uh, heated steering wheels. Okay? He was he built, he built invented some oh, heated he, steering he, wheel he, covers. He invented, he has invented 50 things. That, right. But he none put of, the bag. None, none of which have I really had the made. Bag, I had the bag with something in it. And um, 
I put the battery, I hooked the battery up backwards and then hooking the battery up backwards, it made cold, didn't make heat. And it made the bag oh, cold. So you figured it out. That's cool. So then yeah. I told him, I said, hey, man, that's, that's, you know, let's make this do this. Right. So anyway, listen. So Lazarus has been on, a ba- on, a mo- on an outlaw mission for two days, and Mark <clears throat> calls him up and says, you got hey, the radio station hey two days. I got my invention booked on a couple TV stations, but I, I'm just, and Mark's not a real flashy guy, just kind of a, like he doesn't have any charisma or and don't even know they could speak that well on TV. So he tells Lasker, Hey, we're going to say that you invented it. It's your invention. You have so much charisma. People love you and your full redneck hillbilly type de- deal. <laughs> so you're going to be the face of it. And so I called and since I knew the Iggy on the deal, I just wanted to see how Lasker did. So here it is. Here and Gene, I know you because of the sprint car connection that yeah. you have. You're you're of sprint car fame in this area. Because of me. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, this guy's never been <laughs> he just listened to my show and knew that you were a sprint car guy. You would at least agree to that, right? Yeah, but I had to win to be the sprint car guy. I know that. <laughs> I know that. But okay. you know, you know, he, he was familiar with you from my show. How did you come across this lunchbox idea? Uh, because of racing, I come across it. Uh, what I was trying to do is uh, design <laughs> a cool suit cheap. Yeah, cool suits are very expensive. And I was uh, Alaska is completely lying. It's the head <laughs> shape. It's the head shape. The head, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. This, this is when we were telling him he was going through his Edward Scissorhand phase. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Gene's gone through different phases. And so, it almost Gene, looks- and, and so listen, Gene will admit it now. He's first of all, look at him. He's he's either zooted. high. He's he's, he, he's completely zooted out. He's completely he's been, he's been on the road riding a chopper for two and a half days. He's completely zooted out. Yeah. And he's lying. I know when he's lying. I know when he's telling a tall tale. I've known the guy for 30 years. He's been on and off. One of my best friends for 30 years. And I can tell when he's just shucking and jiving, bullshit it and, and, and lying. And he, this, he did, this didn't come up. Brian, I'm sorry, Mark, Mark, Mark came up with this technology and didn't have the charisma to be on Channel 28. So Gene just starts making stuff up. Listen. Cool suit. Cheap. Yeah, cool suits are very expensive. And I was uh, messing around with some race car components that cool. And Gene, so you like <laughs> completely lying, completely lying right here, completely lying. And gadgets on the race car, and uh, I put one together, and I was going to sew them into my suit. And this is the original bag. This is my baby. It was just sitting there uh, on the seat, and uh, which the- is a brand new bag that 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 Mark just bought at Target three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> If you look at that bag, it has zero wear on it. No, yeah, That's but you can see the bottom bag. left-hand side right there where we already cut it out and yeah. sewed in. Oh, the, yeah. uh, You'd already customize How many it. drinks would that hold? Like four. All right, in see. the truck, I didn't want nothing to get messed up, so I you know, I unzipped the top, I threw it in there, and there were some Tootsie Rolls there. And I, <laughs> yeah, you always, you, every, 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 part of, every part of Gene's pitch, I think he was on two different television stations. I think, well, he, might been, I think he might have been on 10, too, but he always used Tootsie Rolls. Like that's because that happened, you know. Because I, I threw them in the bag, or they were sitting on my dashboard getting soft. Gee, you don't got to sell us. We and I threw them in the bag, and they got <laughs> they got well, they went back to regular. Up, so I just threw them in the bag, so no one see them. And those two girls were melting, right? <laughs> they were melting like, on the dash. Florida Sun. Yeah. Florida Sun. I mean, I opened one up, had to like eat it off the paper, <laughs> and uh, I put them in the bag. And, I, and a few hours later, I reached into one, and it was uh, it, it was very cold. How exactly does this? Work? <laughs> <laughs> it was a very cold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just goes it goes on from there. That's hilarious. But, uh, oh my god! I want to see. I, I got to watch that guy just do the spiel now that I know it's a lie. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, you have to go. It, it's one of the funniest things I think I've had. ever seen. Oh, it's great, dude. It, I think awesome. that was the eighties, but that was two thousand and four. <laughs> two thousand still rocking that haircut. Edward Scissorhands. You know, Edward Scissorhands <laughs> face. <laughs> You know that's a redneck from Florida. Well, that's old Florida. Oh, that's yeah. Florida. I used to. Lo- I grew up loving right there, buddy. Permed. Dirt, it trap, was permed out. Permed. High and tight. Man, tan from riding that hog. Oh my god, that's Unreal. hilarious. I love it. I, love I do too. I mean, oh, that's dude, great. That, that, 
That's so good. I that love how Bubba had to put himself show. over. The only reason he knew about him because of Bubba. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, no wonder Bubba and Hogan were friends. Over. Oh yeah, <laughs> put, they just try to put each other over and over each other all the time. I'm sure. You know it was I me, think- brother. That's what was bringing them to the show. <laughs> Man, uh, I mean, you can go on and on. Who's going to play Bubba year. in the documentary? Is the biggest question I have. Jelly Roll, great question. Oh, Jelly Roll could probably do a great he's job. Ta- he's tall though. How, how tall is Bubba? He's not that tall. No, Bubba, Bubba ain't tall. I mean, let's not. Be, well, it doesn't no. matter because a lot of no, times they have wrestlers. No, have short now guys Bubba is yeah. not as Bubba and Jelly Roll. That ain't right. I gotta stop y'all there. <laughs> I was talking about a big <laughs> that celebrity. Ain't right. I just no, figured a big hey, celebrity. One time, Bubba's big, dude. Bubba's about five hundred pounds. One time. Yeah, I was he just was thinking about big. a non-actor yeah, he got monstrous. type person. He had, to, he had to let his girlfriend wipe his ass. Oh, my God. Yeah, it got bad Jesus. there for him for a minute. Yeah, it, yeah. it got out of control. Yeah, he, he pulled it way back in. All right, okay. Well, yeah. I've never to, known point, Bubba to be wow, like right. that, and that's okay. I mean, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. It I happens. guess you got to have a towel when you get to that point. That's Ooh. interesting. Yeah, it's okay. tough. Hey, girl, yeah. let's get on in here. Wow, Booties. you don't mind. I got something for you. Uh, hey, I need some help in here. <laughs> hey, 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 guys. Hey. Hey. No, because I did see, I thought I saw something recently that was one of the big stars now that's an action star now. I can't think of exactly which one it was. Dressed up as Hogan, holding the belt uh, in the yellow and gold um, on, a, on a social media post or something. And I don't know if that's part of that or is there supposed to be a movie coming out or is that just somebody I don't think that, I don't think anything's been filmed. I don't okay. think we've seen it. I mean, if there, I'm sure something has been filmed. I Let me reel that yeah. back we haven't seen anything that's been like yeah. they haven't given us not yeah. that i'm aware i don't of, know am I, right? I don't know i Maybe think whoever something. whoever directed the wrestler should direct all wrestling movies i got a good job with wrestler a great job with wrestling yeah wrestling these days too is just like they got it you know WWE they know what works to do it, it no, 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 no. They, they have got, their own they thing. Do stuff. But everybody, yeah. so outside people, like whoever did the movie The Wrestler, that was yeah. a well done movie. They got, oh, yeah. They got these direct wrestling movies. For the the recent one, the Von Eric, um, the Iron Claw, I thought it was good. But think about I that. I watched it. Oh, really? It was great. Yeah, I hadn't seen it yet. It's good. Oh, man. It's great. Yeah. But the, and, it, and it uses the characters, though. They were playing Kevin Von Eric, you know, it was a big guy. Anyway, I thought they, yeah, it's yeah, funny yeah. how they do that. And then when they really did, big guy. They, and then when they cast Jeez. Incredible Hulk, Jeez. they go they go CG, and I'm like, uh, just get the biggest. There's guys that are seven foot, five hundred pound monsters, muscles. Get that guy to be the Incredible Hulk. Yes. It's weird how they yeah, cast that's a people. Rare breed. That, Ooh, that's I, a I say all that to money. say that's why I mentioned Jelly Roll was just a big hot person to cast. I was just thinking outside the box as, as a big guy, and I was thinking, well, he's tall. I was just thinking a bigger guy, you know, that was really hot right now. And I. And I stand yeah, with corrected. a big personality too, and, I, and a big personality. He could probably, well, that would do yeah, a great right. yeah. Fill those shoes. Like, what, what, energy what, too. You know what I mean? Because who would energy. be the standard yeah. issue actor to, that that would play a, a, a guy like that? Kevin James. I mean, who who are you gonna get to play Bubba? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Kevin, Kevin James. James really actually probably. Be, I think he, dug I think deep, he, he could do it. That might be a really challenge role for him, but I think he could. Sean Payton was not his role, but I think he could definitely do Bubba. Yeah, I think he could. That was the worst Sean Payton you could ever have. But I thought he did a good job. That movie wasn't terrible. To be fair, it wasn't terrible, but it was just like that. that You get to be Doctor Dan if they have a um if he's in the in the movie at all. Blasey, you get to play Doctor Dan. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, sounds good. It yeah. has to happen. If y'all are listening to this, if you see this, yeah, get, okay. get on the mic. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I'll be interested. Y'all are too, listening it, to this. Blossy, the one man posse, just gave the greatest Dr. Dan impersonation. Y'all can watch this on YouTube as well next week. Y'all are here first at the Bubba podcast network exclusive but it will be on youtube next week love it we just need to get you a gold mic over oh there. yeah we do get it. like like gotta the, get the gold mic hey gotta get a gold before mic. I, while i'm thinking about it while it's fresh on my mind uh tiggy what is the number that the <laughs> army needs to call and leave us voicemails so we can communicate and answer some questions and talk to those folks that is a great question, and I'm glad you asked. That number is 225-800-3058. That is 225-800-3058. Call us. Leave us a voicemail. You never know. It may show up on the show. 
So Dude. yeah, thanks for yeah. that. Yeah, Tig's great... hotline. I remember remember back in the day, you know, we we're on wrestling because it's the Hogan sex tape that's talk that's driving this conversation. Remember back in the day they used to have the 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 hotlines you could call in and talk to a wrestler per se or whatever. I remember they used to show those commercials. And they'd have telethons and they, and it was like the, this is back when you had to pay for long distance. I know people now, young folks don't know that, but there was a time when long distance deal was a big deal. And for sure, I mean, you had to get calling cards and I mean, they could run it up and you had to ask, your, it would say their thing was ask your parents permission before you call. And you would call <laughs> for two, you would, you would think you, if you, you know, you had a plan, like if I stay on for 45 seconds, not a minute, so they won't charge me. So you call and then your parents are like, Hey, what is this? Five, four ninety nine or two ninety nine <laughs> Call on the, yep. on the phone bill. And you're like, ah, uh, it says, it says, uh, junkyard dog <laughs> hotline. You call the junkyard dog. I was like, ah, baby. <laughs> you know? Dude, they had so many ways back then to scam you remember? money. Off uh, of I remember oh, all those yeah. numbers remember in there. Oh, yes. I remember that. This is yeah. free. Y'all call the, call the Tiggs. This is free. Hotline. It's, it's totally, totally free. free. For entertainment purposes only, no, no that is money it. asking, it goes no scamming. Look, yes, nothing. Full like disclosure, it. Tiggy set up a Google Voice. It goes straight to a voicemail. That no, gives us a yes. number. And we can, That's we can all, all there check is it to it. Just leave us a voicemail. Stuff. It's going to yeah, be fun. We, we've gotten a couple. and we'll we want them. We want more. We know y'all are yes. listening. Tell us if you love this show, if you like this kind of format of what we're doing for the Bubba exclusives. Uh, we kind of like it, think it's fun. Yeah. Uh, or and if, if it's you something it, you want to, yeah, and if it's so. something you want to chime in on the conversation, like if there's a point in one of yeah. the shows, if it's an old show, uh, you know, any of the shows, if there's a point when and you were like you want to make a comment on it, just reference that and we'll go back into it and, and toss you it around. Right. I mean, we hey, and and just because there's three geniuses up here, uh, we all get <laughs> we 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 are tend to let some stuff get through the cracks and slip every now and then. So every we need to be once in a checks. while, just every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, especially music Very stuff. Rare. If you fact check me on music stuff or wrestling, I'll be a little like, ooh, I should be better than that, but I'll also never forget it, and I'll appreciate it in the long run. So, Because I'm trying to be truthful, even if I spit out something that's not <laughs> Amen. True. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. And so, you know what yeah, call else? in. Please call in. And Tiggs, I'll see you this weekend. We yes, are heading will. down to Baton yes, Rouge. Yes, you will. By I'm, the time. Yeah, I'm coming. By and the I'm time bringing... everybody is listening to this. Yep. His beautiful Dr. Dan looking ass should be at my house with his buddy, an Alabama fan. And I'm coming. JR. Yes. Who are you JD? bringing? JD? JD Lawrence? Legend. That's it. That's it. Legend. Yeah. See, when we're open over here, JR. This isn't any kind of standoffish thing. Welcoming. Mm. Come on in. Let's have some fun. Yeah. It's going to oh, be a fun yeah. ball game. Elimination playoff game is what it's going to be i'm looking be, forward to that so. tailgate that tailgate's where it's going to be we're going to come in get some of the tails from the tailgate going i'm like i said i'm coming and i'm bringing hell with can me I, uh, hell's going to be my cameraman you nice. know so can i tell you a little bit about what's coming on to this tailgate blazy i mean no we here at the end of this show sure, why wouldn't you though those of you out there listen that don't care but go check out our stuff we have a lot of stuff that comes from the Cajun Tiger tailgate, it doesn't. You don't have to be an LSU fan to appreciate what's coming from there because it's just pure insanity. That's what happens. Yes. In Death Valley this weekend, we're cooking uh, twelve briskets and twenty racks of ribs. Wow! But that's just on the menu. We're cooking some of those at my house. We're cooking about half of those briskets at the house. Uh, they're already trimmed stuff. They're going to be more of a Cajun flair kind of brisket whatever they're going to be fantastic is what they're going to be I'll bet. but we have 24 of lsu's players parents we're going to be the host for them this weekend so that's going to be oh, fun yeah. yeah that's going to be a lot of fun yeah, and then the uh full we experience also what their money's going exactly <laughs> and they're going to have a a party oh, at the cajun yeah. tiger tailgate oh yeah and then we have bocock cigars that are going to be there oh, as well. I saw Rolling that. Habanero, Grab me a few of those, Blasey, on the way Habanero. back. Oh, oh heck yeah. Heck Havana. yeah. Yes. We'll get you one. Now, I don't know if you're going to want one, uh, honestly. I think they're going to be in effigy of Alabama. But oh, that's fine. I don't, I don't I mean, they're LA, I'll smoke it still at some be, point. Hey, you win. You want that. Yeah. You know? I'm good either way, man. I don't even care anymore. 
I just I don't I, I'd love I love a nice you, cigar. We've kind of gotten season. to the age of where it's just fun to play the game and yeah. Well, with you're going to beat with us the, a bunch, the, and we're going to beat you a bunch for the rest well, of our lives. So yeah, let's it's going to be fun back and forth it. like everything yeah. just to distract everybody, especially now with all the money. I mean, it's just like everybody swapping. There's no watching a player stay for years and do this and do that. It's crazy. Basketball. I just noticed Mark Sears uh, from Muscle Shoals, Alabama, is going coming back as a senior. And Alabama's number okay. two in the country in basketball. That's well, shocking. I mean, but even with wow. that, I'm, that's yeah, crazy. Know, Coach, but even with that, I'm not. I'm just not as about sports as I used to be. I love them, love playing them, and all that. NIL just weird spot in my it, life. Dude. And the NIL thing with pe- players leaving for money, and uh, you know, so much. Even the players just bouncing around like they do. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah, anyhow, that's a whole. That's a whole but other show. We'll yeah. we'll get into that. But yes, Blasey's coming to Tig's house again. No oh, yeah. telling what'll happen. We're gonna get a ton of content. It's gonna yes, be a are. blast this weekend. So y'all be on the lookout. Got some ideas. Don't you know that stadium's gonna oh, be yeah. lit? Don't you know that stadium's gonna be lit Saturday night? It's gonna oh, be, it's gonna be crazy. Sanity, Is it dude. gonna be clubs? Is it gonna be uh 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 club? It's gonna be there? clubbing. Oh yeah, they're, they're gonna, gonna club it. <laughs> See, I'm gonna stay oh, get the tailgate. JD's like, and I got good, tickets. I was like, I don't want to go good in news. there. I'm used good to, I'm news. spoiled going to Troy games. I sit like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, those games, I'm nothing against it, but that's a packed game. At Troy, we get to walk around and hang out. Absolutely. You're going to have so much fun yeah. at the tailgate. Stay, tailgate. All that, we have six yeah. TVs now, I do believe, is what he told me. <laughs> they bought more. This is going to be the the wildest tailgate maybe that we've ever had. Beautiful. And and my, my boy Darren is staying out he is. He sold his tickets because he's like, yeah, I'm gonna make my money. I don't blame so him. He so, he, yeah, he sold his tickets. He's gonna be out there with you, so you will be with Darren. You're gonna be getting interviews as the game goes on, and okay, I mean, this is gonna be incredible. This it will is. be a masterpiece. It's be huge tales from. The, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be huge. the biggest huge ever. Guy. It's gonna be huge. It doesn't yep. even matter about the you game. None of no. that actually. The game doesn't matter. The Everything tailgate. else is gonna be insane. Yes. And by the way, a potential a potential tropical storm in the Gulf coming. Just to add a little spice. Oh, it's barreling right just to, to us. Just to add a little spice. Right to us. It's humid yeah. outside yeah, right now right in my house. <laughs> I know. The Gulf breeze is humid right now. It's thick. Oh, off. it's it so was, humid. Yeah. And the Gulf was angry and today too. When I was, I was work. I went on to Perdido Key today and noticed. I said, "Man, yeah, it's coming." Oh, oh yeah, wow. it's coming. Yeah, that's gonna At be least fun, it's guys. Gonna be windy. Yeah. It's gonna be windy. It's gonna be it, fun. I wish oh, yeah. you could come, Jr. I know. Yeah. It's gonna I think be awesome. this I got, year's I got gonna the, knock it out. Yeah, I got my last show of the year this Saturday, so I'll be okay. I'll be in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Wow, get the rest of the year off, huh? Yep, I'm off Boom. till January. Got a sh- That's awesome. show in end of January. Well, I'm off from that job. You know, I've got a couple others. Oh, I know on, that. I get that. We I mean, know that. But, but I am going to take a break. That's good news for the yeah. podcast world. It is for sure. Well, and the fir- and next week, um, I'll be coming um, from. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to uh, join you guys from Key West. Um, let's be going down there to Shark Key uh, oh, next Tuesday for about a week. So hopefully, I can. We'll, find a time when i can try to jump on with you guys while oh, that'd be there. great that'd be fantastic yeah. yes it and, will. and have yes, fun so. dude i'm jealous of that yep man that'll be that'll be a good run it will boys be. that was a good show fun that, that was fun was, stuff that was fun it that was, was. Fun. Oh, yeah oh yeah it was great i'm well, glad to, i'm glad to know all that stuff because i'm yes. gonna have some more time to listen to the radio and listen to my podcasts and stuff and um i, I you know i've watched the bubba clips on social media and stuff um and 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 I, I just don't catch them all that, you know, it's just the ones I do and it's interesting, but it's more in context when you know the whole show and, and what's going right. on during it. So I look forward to looking at that, but thanks for catching me up on that. Um, and yeah, I wish I could be with you guys, but y'all make sure to take a lot of pictures and get a lot of videos of folks and, and do all the fun <laughs> oh, stuff. While we y'all will. Are there. It's we a big one. Yeah, it's a big them. one. So, you know, and get will. JD, get some, get some camera time on JD, like early. Like oh, that's happening. Stuff. He yeah. may be the only Alabama person that's, that, that I interview, or at least yeah. I can tell you that. It's going to be a home crowd. But that's why we have Blasey, Blasey to give the other point of view, maybe some this week, because <laughs> it ain't coming from Tiggy. No, so maybe this one. you should break. You should get. Does he? If he doesn't know the Bubba show, Bubba sh- stuff, you should tell him what you told us, Blasey, and then get his reaction at, coming from a lawyer standpoint on what he thinks each lawyer was up to and where he thinks the twist. Oh and yeah, came from. maybe and lay out the case yeah. and let's get his. Whole, say, well, how like, would yeah. if someone we were to come go, to him? We may that have way, our own whiskey and wine post game. 
Oh, well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Judge and, Lawrence. And, that, and do it. Yeah. The, do it judge here. Lawrence. We'll, we'll enshrine him as a, as a judge. Judge Lawrence. He's just, he's just an election away from being one, right? In the right. experience that he has. And, right. You know what I mean? Right? <laughs> judge right. Lawrence. <laughs> Wow. Hell yeah. We know Hell a couple yeah. if you Good need idea. to call one too. But you know, we could, yeah, ask him how would somebody approach you and what was your what would you be your obligations? I mean, you'd have to be I mean, you know, I We may have to present like an argument. Maybe we actually set up a case court case at your house and like you 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 become like the prosecutor, I'm the defense or something, I'm defending Bubba, you're you're representing Brother, if we Galta. do that in post game, there's well. no way I can do that. <laughs> we don't have to do it post game. We're going to be there a couple of nights. We'll do it Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> do it before the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's going to have to happen before the game. Post game ain't happening. Oh. No way. No, win or lose on, Just on Tiggy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Too. Yeah. Something, well, it was, something. Idea. It is. And y'all are going to see something from this weekend next week. There's no doubt about it. Hey, well, we we barely talked Until about food, then. but I'm going to tell y'all, I smoked a, a couple of pounds of um, – butcher box wings on my traeger um with some hefe uh seasoning on them before oh, hell yeah oh, i did this podcast yeah. so y'all get real good and hungry because uh i am mm. and i'm about to go crunch them suckers here in just a minute you damn right you are you damn right you are oh yeah well with that we'll see y'all later <laughs>